for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. Today is a day of blessings, a day of gladness, a day of great news. And all these things are possible through the Word of God. Sometimes the good news comes as a serious admonishment that presses us against the wall and gives us a wake-up call. Jesus, I'm in the wrong, and I'm causing great harm to my own life right now. And sometimes when we take that decision, my brethren, we are headed towards happiness. Sometimes the Word comes to us without waiting for it. A pastor was inspired and he spoke about something that you really needed to hear. So keep an eye out and pay attention. Be attentive when in the Lord's presence because God wants to do something in your life. In the book of Hebrews, and sometimes I mention this verse, it's in chapter 12, and this is a very important word from God here that I'd like to convey to you. Hebrews 12, verse number 1. I won't go over the whole verse again because we've already studied this verse exhaustively. I just want to mention a certain topic now. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now I want to focus precisely on this very subject, which is the race, the race that is set before us. God assigned every individual in this world with a mission, a race. And this mission should never be conducted in a sluggish manner. Like some individuals who start pondering and reasoning and they justify themselves. I'm Cartesian, you know, because of the scientific Cartesian method. So they test, and if it works, then they proceed. Not in faith. In faith, we do things to race. God has done the work. It's not us who are to do the work. And if we apply Cartesian methods in our faith, we will miss out every time on God's Spirit, which does the work. He is speaking. He is revealing in your spirit, not in your mind. When you understand the Word of God, it's already an accomplished work according to the strength that God gives you because we must serve the Lord God with all of our strength, with all of our soul, and with all of our heart. You take possession and ordain and consider the work is done. Keep praising the Lord God. The intensity of your faith that you will use will determine the speed with which the work will be done in your life. If you wait because you want to understand it first because that's the way I am, that means you don't trust in God. And when you don't trust in God, you're implying that he is lying to you. And you just can't trust people who are liars. If an individual never gives you a reason to think that they are lying to you, then you should probably trust them because they are not fake, you know them well, they tell the truth. But one day this person may surprise you and disappoint you. But God will never ever disappoint you. God only leads us to triumph, always joyful. When you understand your race, my dear brethren, hold fast and submit to God as he asks you and also the guidance from the Holy Spirit, but run the race that has been set before you by God. Act fast, that is, make haste, don't delay. Don't be sluggish like a title because you haven't understood. God, I don't quite understand it, but if you've opened the door, the door will remain open. And if you're leading me, then I won't stumble on any stone that is along the way. I will solely do that which is your will, but at the same time, without being impatient. Here is the secret. Let us run with endurance. We have to be really patient. Wait for the Lord's guidelines, and when they come, take possession of them. You're not supposed to find them. God will give you the guidelines. Just keep believing and keep ordaining. Take possession with endurance, waiting on the Lord without losing patience. Because losing patience may cause you great harm to your own health, your heart or your immune system. You become stressed because you have things to do. No, I will do what the Lord has told me to do. When he commands, I do the work. I shall ordain in the name of Jesus. Things will happen this way because my God does not fail me. So obviously, according to the words of this verse, we have to lay aside every weight and all sins as well, which so easily ensnare us. Before you sin, enter into prayer and say, God, I don't want that. It can't stay in my heart. It can't stay in my mind. It can't remain before my eyes. 
because these things hinder God's plans. I want to become free. First of all, because I don't want to become contaminated by the evil one. Second, because I don't want to be an obstacle that will keep God's will from being fulfilled. And I want to please the Lord. When I please the Lord, he will please me in return because when I love the Lord, he loves me back. Jesus loves me and promises to reveal himself to me. So what should we do? Run with endurance the race that is set before us. I will go forward, not remain in back, but I will run the speed that the Lord gives me according to the strength and the understanding that he gives me through his holy word. And in so doing, you will find out what is the good and perfect and acceptable will of the Lord God for your life. And undoubtedly, it is wonderful for the type of person he has turned you into. He made me in a certain way, you in another, we're the same, but with a lot of differences. Every one of us is an individual. There are no equal people. A son is not the same as his father. A sibling is not like the other. All of us have singularities, but every one of us before the Lord have the same opportunity to serve him with all those small but assorted differences and within the Lord God's will. The race is set, believe and run, and God will surely bless you in the name of Jesus, amen? My dear brethren, we have been studying Jeremiah 17, and it's very serious. If you, if you haven't heard it, make sure you learn it now because this is very serious. Jeremiah 17, starting with verse number one. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron. With the point of a diamond, it is engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of your altars. Let's look at this verse. Sin is serious. Avoid it. Flee from it. If you fail, repent. Seek God until you are forgiven and joy is restored to your heart. While you do not rejoice, it means that sin is dominating you. And your sin is written with a pen of iron on the tablet of your heart. It hurts. And the mark is there forever. And at the tip of a pen, there is a diamond to engrave it deeply. It is written defeated, overwhelmed, unworthy of the kingdom of the Lord, and so on. It's unavoidable. No matter who you are, you've sinned, it's very serious. Dr. Suarez, how can I erase this engraving? There's nothing in the world that can erase it. A psychologist, a psychiatrist, maybe a plastic surgeon, nobody. It's on the tablet of your heart and on the horns of your altars. But what to do? Simply repent. Only the blood of Jesus is, is able to remove that ugly scar and that, that awful writing. Instead of unworthy, he'll remove the un and keep the word worthy of the kingdom of heavens. Or he'll write new things in your heart with other words because those words weren't good, words of condemnation. And then, and the altars, the horns of the altars. In all of us, God has put altars for him the altar of faithfulness. Say you receive a very indecent proposal by which any fool is deceived, but you are not. You have glorified the Lord in your altars. The demon tempts to do things that almost everybody does for you to get rich, but you don't do it because you are faithful. That means you have glorified God in your altars and you love him. There's the altar of love, you rejoice, there's the altar of joy. You have peace, there's the altar of peace, of self-control, of perseverance. On those altars, the word unworthy cannot become engraved, no. You have the right to enter, pray to him, and worship our Lord God, and bless the altar of the divine healing, of solution to your problems, but sin causes trouble. Verse number two, I'll repeat what I have said before. While their children remember their altars and their wooden images by the green trees on the high hills. Who are those children, Dr. Suarez? That which you have produced. You'll be a servant of God. It's your resolution. You will become an honest person. I will be a person who will serve our Lord God. You remember all of your altars, but you are not able to use a single one of them because your entrance is forbidden. The word unworthy is engraved. You're a sinner. How will you enter that place? There is a way for you to enter. You had all of those green hills. You had green trees. Beautiful things you envisioned for your life, but you can't attain them. God gave you a dream. You've received it, but it doesn't come true due to sin. 
If your sin is hidden, then there's no way, no way, no way you have to make sure that you confess. There's more. Verse number 3 now. Now it's God who's making an outcry here. Oh, my mountain in the field. See how God treats you? Not as a small mound of land is something unimportant. You are the mountain of God in the field, an unshakable mountain. I will give you as plunder your wealth, all your treasures. This is awful. God gave you a revelation of salvation. He gave you all these wonderful treasures, powerful authority over the devil, the right to enter into his presence and pray and receive your blessing, the capacity to withstand all temptations. You've thrown it all away, despised it, and now God will give them as plunder. There's no way. As plunder to him who defeated you. That's sad. And your high places of sin within all your borders. You were in a high place, but not anymore because of sin. Within all your borders. That's what happens. My brethren, the Bible tells us be holy 100%, not 99%. There's this little sin that I cherish. I'm kind of naughty, and sometimes I think about this and enjoy it, such as obscene movies and things like that. No, no, no. Within all your borders, you have to be holy. It's your inheritance. It's your wealth, my brethren. Verse number four now. I'll read it again before we examine something new. And you, even yourself, shall let go of your heritage which I gave you. Have you said yes to sin? You're depriving yourself of the heritage that God gave you. What heritage is that, Dr. Suarez? Do you want to know? Based upon the word, it's in the Bible, Isaiah 54, 17. You shall let go of the heritage that I gave you. Wow, that's very serious, isn't it? And verse 17 reads, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. You'll be deprived of this, of this heritage. Which one? The one that empowers you to undo all the weapons, all the snares that the devil with all of his ingenuity has set up to destroy you, to destroy your body with a terrible disease, your knees, your cartilage, your eyesight, your hearing, your immune system, your high blood pressure, all of your dreams. He is against all of these things and he will destroy them. Uh-uh. If you stand firm, because you have a heritage from God to undo every one of the weapons formed against you, and they shall not prosper. Let's go to Isaiah again. It's chapter 54, verse 17. 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, shall not prosper. And every tongue which rises against you, all accusations, everything, in judgment, in God's presence and in prayer, you shall condemn. That's all. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Who is it that you serve? I'm a servant of God. Whoever commits sin becomes a slave of sin, brethren. But only through repentance are you set free. Not only coming to church and singing praises over and over and rejoicing and, and praying, oh, glory to God, I'm free. No, it's by confessing your sins by removing the last stain. Sometimes you have to look for the one to whom you caused harm, and only then you're entitled to your heritage. But let's go back to Jeremiah, because this is not today's message. Jeremiah 17, verse number 4. And you, even yourself, shall let go of your heritage. My brethren, the heritage is yours. No one can take it from you. It is your property, but you will be deprived of it. God gave you the heritage, but how could that happen? Through sin. Letters, bold with a point of iron, very frightening, with a, a diamond at the point, defeated, unworthy, transgressor, cheater, 
Enter into God's presence. Whenever you can say, God, today I want to open my heart. I want to pour it out. I just can't go on like this. I'm letting go of my heritage. God will cleanse you with the blood of Jesus. You will feel joy, and you won't even have to ask for more. You'll no longer be deprived. On the horns of your altars, there will be nothing written about your defeat or unworthiness, someone who has no rights. God, there is no condemnation for you because you are in Jesus Christ. The power of God will be with me because I'm starting to overcome right now and to ordain. I will have God's angels working by my side because I'll be obedient to my Father and the angels will rejoice because they are willing to work by your side. They were sad before when you were a recurring sinner, but now you are down and you're picking yourself up and exerting your rights. And you shall let go of your heritage which I gave you. Brethren, it's ours. No one can take away what God has given us. The gifts of God are irrevocable. Oh, hallelujah. There's no way he will revoke them, and the devil can't take it. It's ours. It's in us. If we're letting it go, now we won't do that again. Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Today is the day of sanctification. Today is the day for you to take a stand and say, I will no longer accept the offers from the devil. From now on, there will only be blessings. And I'll finish with the verse that reads the following. And I will cause you to serve your enemies. If you don't make a decision and you let go of your heritage, you shall become, you shall become a servant of your enemies. Oh, mercy, Dr. Suarez. Does that mean the demon of bipolar disorder can rule over me? Yes. And also the demon that causes leprosy? Yes. You'll become his servant. The demon of cancer? Yes. The demon of wickedness? Yes. You will become a servant because God let you. Is that it? He will allow it. So it means that if you don't possess your heritage and make amends with God, that's what happens. The devil will take control, Peter. The devil has asked that I may sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. Jesus is praying for you. My brethren, accept it. Today is the day to make amends with the Lord. And I will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you do not know. There's only one land you may know. Your own land. What is your land? The Holy Gospel. My brethren, God is speaking directly to your heart. In the land which you don't know is sin, which no one should know, because it's becoming more and more deteriorated. It doesn't change. Every day the wickedness levels grow without interruption. With God, His mercies are made new every day. You don't even have to think twice concerning which one you prefer, unless you are completely out of your mind. Only if you don't love yourself. But I'm sure that you do. Of course you want to overcome. My dear brethren, there's a demon holding you back. And let us pray, God, this demon must fall down to the ground. Because when the light shines, my God, it's like what you said to that man with the withered hand. Stretch out your hand. And to that woman who couldn't bend over. Woman, you are free of your infirmity. Jesus, you said that when you set someone free, they are free forever. And those who have heard your word now and understood it, they are free now. The demon was returning God with other evils, seven times worse than the previous one. But those people are now saying, no, I want my sanctification. I need my sanctification. I need to breathe sanctification. Oh my God, sanctification, please enter into my heart. Shout out to God like this. Please take over the direction of my life for the better. I don't want anything that the enemy can offer me. My heritage is real and genuine. I shall rise up and belong to God. So you have many things to say to God. Right now, or at home, or in your private consecration, God is giving you an opportunity to be happy 
or that will cause you to serve your enemies in a land which you don't know. No, no, no. The first option is much better. Possess your heritage. God, today is the day of healing, of the soul, of the body, of the family. Thank you so much, God. And in the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Now let's watch the real life drama for today. I converted in 89. And while we lived in Sao Paulo, we belonged to that other church. But when we moved here, we went to the Grace of God Church. The Word of God, as Dr. Suarez preaches, and as he explains it, we actually never heard. But now I know. We know the Word of God. We really do. We know it. You know? How to defend ourselves from evil. One day I made a decision. I will become a sponsor. And from then on, I've never failed to sponsor, and I understand I'm furthering God's work. Ever since, ever since we met each other, she always complained about back problems, and when she moved, it would hurt a lot, you know, right? When she cleaned the house and washed our clothes, she felt a lot of pain, and when she was, and when she was working too, she stopped because she was in pain, right? Ever since she was 20, she has had this problem in her back. I am 76. I took some medicine and went to see the doctor. He told her to never undergo a surgery because it wasn't going to solve her problem. It was crooked. I had a bone spur. She took some medications, but they didn't work. After a few days, the pain would come back and she started suffering from the same pain again. With time, it got really worse. I couldn't sweep the floor, I, um, I couldn't lift heavy things. And I was a restless person, you know? I'm always dragging the furniture and moving them around, you know? So I believe it just makes things worse, right? Oh, there were times that she couldn't do anything around the house, you know? I take lots of medications so that I could stand the pain and it was almost every day. She always said to me, one day God will heal me, one day God will heal me, right? Then that day arrived. When he called people up front for him to pray, we went there and I felt better immediately, you know? I felt that it was over. She said, I'll go seek my blessing today. And she certainly did receive her blessing, right? What were you suffering from? My spine, pain in my back, radiating to my For back. how long? Oh, a long time. A long time. It began a long time ago? A long time. A long time. And what couldn't you do? I couldn't bend over. Bend over in the name of Jesus. And now, sister. It doesn't hurt. And it never will. And I haven't felt pain ever since. Today I did all the house chores and I didn't feel any pain at all. I couldn't even remain seated for a long time, nor lying in bed or doing the house chores. Only the Lord God can heal. He changed her life. Now she can do everything, you know? I cleaned the entire house without feeling pain at all. God delivered her and healed her completely. I am so very happy and joyful. I feel as light as a feather. She's fine. She's healed. She hasn't complained about her back anymore. It's a miracle done by Jesus, right? Jesus is truly wonderful. Actually, when you least expect it, the Lord does His work. I was suffering for a long time. And in the blink of an eye, it was all gone. It was really wonderful. Only Jesus can do it. Only Jesus can heal. Only Jesus can do it. There's no other. What a beautiful story, brethren. 56 years of suffering is over after just one prayer, after one decision. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and dine with him. He said he will dine with you, and that'll be an occasion that he'll be in fellowship with you. I hope you dine with him today, and that while you pray, you open up to him so that you receive your blessing. Let's go to the question and answer segment. Doctor, 
How does the Lord God show his power through prayer? Well, I don't know. All I know is that he shows it. I don't see anything in the spiritual world. I just, I just walk by faith. Some preachers say they see demons. I don't want to see demons. They're such ugly creatures, you know. If God shows one to me, I will set the demon on fire, right? I don't see anything. I don't see angels. I don't see demons. I just walk by faith in God's word, and I know that God works, and the proof is the miracles that he works when we pray. And glory to God for that. Now let's go to the Open Your Heart segment. Dr. Suarez, I am 34 years old, and one year ago I found out that I suffer from schizophrenia. I'm under medical treatment, and I feel much better. However, what bothers me and makes me really nervous is the voice that I hear all the time saying that it's going to kill me, that I'm a prostitute that covets married men, among other things that I've never done. My pastor always prays for me, but it doesn't work. The doctor told me it's part of the disease and that with medication it will subside, but I believe that it's the work of the enemy. My father has no patience with me. He says I am good for nothing, and sometimes he threatens to beat me. He told me to go live by myself, but I can't afford to do it, and my mother earns very little. Dr. Suarez, I need so much help with prayers. I will start with a quote of a very popular saying, we are all a bit crazy and doctors in something. <laughs> and it's true. Those voices that you hear are not actually demons' voices. Almost everybody has this weakness. They're thinking that they sinned, they transgressed, and they start hearing voices. You have to be firm, focusing on the Word of God. When we accept Jesus, we also accept all the comforts of the Lord, and they remain in us. The power is already in you. So very shortly, you shall overcome. Of course, keep taking the medication your doctor prescribes. Then later, tell him how you feel, and when he examines you, he'll see that you've been delivered and that there's absolutely nothing wrong with you because Jesus has come to set you free in the name of our Lord. Let me pray with everybody who is here now and who is in need of this blessing. God, the prayer that I and all of these people pray is for those who are at home, at a hospital, in prison, or at work, in need of your help. We have already been comforted in all of our tribulations with the comforts that you give to us, God. Thank you for that. And the enemy may try, but there is no place for him in our lives. We pay no heed to the threats and the attitudes of the enemy. And I bless all these people by saying, all evil, get out of their lives. In the name of Jesus, amen.